It's time for Orchard CMS. With so many web hosting services to choose from, it's difficult to choose the right service for you. According to CNET, a popular media website that publishes media on technology, they recommend using an open source content management system. Many people use WordPress on top of PHP and MySQL. But what about Orchard Core CMS? Well, today we'll be creating a multi-tenant software as a service web hosting service with the Orchard Core CMS framework. Welcome back. So what is multi-tenant? Multi-tenant or multi-tenancy means that a single instance of the software and its supporting infrastructure serves multiple customers. Each customer shares the software application and depending on the model may also share a single database. Each tenant's data is isolated and remains invisible to other tenants. So what about SaaS? SaaS stands for Software as a Service or also known as Web-Based Software, On-Demand Software, and Hosted Software. It is a software delivery model in which software is licensed on a subscription basis and is centrally hosted. It is sometimes referred to as on-demand software or software plus services. So let's get started on creating a multi-tenant SaaS web hosting service with the Orchard Core CMS framework. Okay, let's go ahead and start Visual Studio. And let's go ahead and create a new project. And let's go ahead and select an ASP.NET web application. And let's go ahead and select next. And for the project name, let's go ahead and use orchardskills.orchardcore.orchardcms. And then we'll go ahead and hit create. And then we'll select an empty application. Hit create. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and right click on solution, add new item, and let's just select a text item here, add that, and let's go ahead and rename that to nuget.config. And for the contents, let's just go ahead and select the Orchard Core preview feed, which is pointing to the dev branch. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and add an item group. Um, we'll include the Orchard Core NuGet package, orchardcore.applications.cms.target. Okay, great. Okay, let's head over to startup.cs. And in the configure services, let's go ahead and add services.addorchardcore.cms. And let's go ahead and replace app.use routing and app.use endpoints with app.use static files and app.use orchard core. Okay, let's save everything and let's go ahead and make sure everything builds. Okay, great. And let's make sure that it works. So let's go ahead and hit the green triangle play button. Okay, it looks like it's running. Let's go ahead and hit the finish setup and it looks like everything's working. So let's just make sure by logging in and then we'll select our dashboard. Okay, great. It looks like everything's working, including the dashboard. Okay, now let's go ahead and create the SaaS module, Software as a Service. So let's go up to the solution, click on the solution, right click, and let's go ahead and add a new project. And for this, we're gonna select a class library, .NET Core. Click on Next. And for the project name, we're gonna use orchardskills.orchardcore.sas. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and hit the Create button. All right, so now let's click on the class1.cs file and let's go ahead and rename this. So use the rename option, click all the check boxes and let's rename this to startup. Hit apply. Okay, great. For this module, we're gonna use Razor Pages. So we're gonna to have to click on the project and put dot .razor there and also add Razor support for MVC. And then we're gonna add a lot of packages from Orchard Core in the item group. We're gonna add Orchard Core dot admin abstractions, Orchard Core email dot abstractions, Orchard Core dot display management, Orchard Core dot data abstractions, Orchard Core dot model targets, Orchard Core Recipes dot abstractions, Orchard Core dot resource management dot Orchard Core dot setup dot abstractions and 
Orchard Core setup. Okay, great. Now, since this is an MVC application, we're going to have to have some porting folders for that. So let's go ahead and add a new folder and let's add controllers and let's go ahead and add view models. Let's also add our views. And then also we're going to have to add a recipe. So we need a recipes folder. Okay, great. And then we're going to also need a www root folder. Okay, great. I think that's all the folders we need. And one other thing we're going to need is a manifest.cs. Let's right click and add new item. And we'll add a code file. And let's call it manifest.cs and hit add. And let's go ahead and add that content. So here we're going to specify the name as SAS and an author website version and then a description, which is a SAS multi-tenant website. Okay, great. Save all that. So one other thing we need to do is let's go ahead and create our recipe. And right click and add new item. And let's select a json.configuration. And for the json file, let's use sas.recipe.json. Click add. Okay, great. Okay, let's go ahead and enter in our sas recipe. Okay, so our name will be sas, display name sas, description, a sas multi-tenant application, web application, a sas multi-tenant website, and we'll give the author, website, is, setup, recipe, true, and then we'll add admin, diagnostics, email, home root, localization, features, navigation, recipes, resources, roles, settings, tenants, and themes, and we'll use, we'll enable the SAS module that we're creating, and then orchardcore.users. And for the themes, we'll use the themes, the admin, safe mode, and the name will be themes, ad, admin is the admin, and site is the theme. And also for the home root, we'll have an action of index, controller home, and our area will be SAS. Okay, great. Now in our www root folder, we're gonna to have to have some porting images. So let's go ahead and copy that in there. And inside there, we're gonna have a, a banner for the top of our page. And then also we'll need some images for the themes, for the agency theme, for the blog theme, and the coming soon theme. And then also a theme.png for the module that we're creating. Okay, let's talk about how the SAS module is going to work. The first thing, the user is going to visit the landing page of the SAS website. The user registers their email, their website name, and selects a theme. The user must agree to the licensing terms and conditions. Once he submits this information, the site is created and an email is sent to the user with the username, password, and URL of their new website. Okay, let's work on the model view controller and let's add the necessary files for that. So for the controllers, let's add a new item. Let's add homecontroller.cs, and let's head down to the view model, and let's go ahead and add a new item, and let's add register users view model.cs. Okay, now let's go to the views. So in the views, we're gonna have a home directory, add home, and under the home directory, add a new item, and let's add a razor page. Let's add our index.cshtml. Let's add a success.cshtml. Okay. And under views, let's add underscore view imports.cshtml. Okay, great. Okay, let's go ahead and define our view models. And we just have one. It's the register user view model.cs. Okay, so let's go ahead and define that. And there, basically, we have the site name, the handle, the email, the recent name, and accept terms. Okay, great. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and click on view imports.html. And there we want to inherit Orchard Core Display Management Razor, Razor Page T model using SAS, using SAS view models, and then add tag helpers, Microsoft ASP.NET Core.MVC, tag helpers helpers, Orchard Core dot display management, and also finally Orchard Core dot resource management. Okay, and, and for the success, basically we just need to display a message to the screen that was successful, and we'll use the bootstrap Jumbotron. And then for the index.cshtml, we're going to use a Jumbotron to display the Orchard Core logo, and then basically we're going to create a form where the user can register. So they'll email, site name, the recipe name, and then they must also accept the terms. Okay. And we left the hard for last, the homecontroller.cs. Once the user submits 
his information, checks to make sure that the terms are accepted, make sure that the tenant name is valid by the handle. We go out and make sure that the name doesn't already exist. So if it does, it gives an error. And then we go and start setting up the registration process here. So we set the recipe name, the database provider, and then we save our settings there. We set up the recipe, and if there's an error, we error. And then we go ahead and set up all the credentials, admin password, and we go ahead and create the confirmation link. And then we go ahead and create the message. Once the message is all set up, and we send out the message, and the site is all complete. All right, let's go ahead and build and run the application. So let's go up here and click on build and do a rebuild solution. And there you go, everything built successfully. So now let's give it a try and let's hit the little green play triangle and we'll see if this all works. And there we go, it comes directly up with the sauce recipe. So let's select that, put in our credentials and hit the blue finish setup button. Okay, that's great. There's our web hosting a SaaS multi-tenant website up and running. That's great. We have to set up SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. So to do that, we need to log in to our dashboard. So let's go to admin, log in, enter our credentials, and let's go to configuration, go to settings, and then go to SMTP. Now, there's lots of providers out there for SMTP. You can write your own or do whatever. But I use a, a company called Mailgun and they're pretty good and, and they're free up to a certain amount of emails. So I'm just going to use those guys as the provider and I'm not being sponsored by them or anything. It just happened to be a service that I use. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll enter in the SMTP and for the email, let's just put sales at orchardskills.com. And we'll select network delivery and let's go ahead and use for the port name 587 and let's do a start DLS and let's require credentials and let's go ahead and put a username in and then my password and let's hit save and let's see let's just go ahead and do a test email real quick to see if this all works and we'll just send it to ourselves and we'll say test SAS and testing SAS. And let's go ahead and hit send. And it says it was successfully sent. So let's just make sure, maybe make sure here. And there it is. There's our email. So that's all working. That's great. So now let's head back here and let's go to back to our site and let's go ahead and Pretend that we are visiting the site and we want to set up a website for hosting. And so let's go ahead and enter our email and let's do our site name of my Orchard Course CMS, of course. And let's go ahead and select the agency theme and click on I agree with the terms and conditions. And then let's go ahead and press the blue submit button. Okay, it says our site is created successfully. An email has been sent to the provided address. Please check your inbox or spam folder and follow the instructions. This email contains a link to set up your site and the credentials to access the admin. Okay, that's great, let's go in here. And there we go, there's the SAS registration. Let's click on that and it says, hello, your demo site, My Orchard Core CMS has been created. Set up your site by opening this link. Log in to the admin with these credentials. Awesome. So let's go ahead and click on the link. And there we go. It's great. We got this working. So let's go ahead and see if we can click on the link and let's do, go to admin. Now our credentials are going to be different. So let's go ahead and copy this and log in. And there we go. Today we've created a multi-tenant software as a service web hosting service with the Orchard Core CMS framework. When a user visits our site, they can register with their email, enter a site name, select a recipe, and once they accept the licensing agreement, they can submit their request. The site is created and an email is sent to the user with the login credentials and URL of the website. The user receives an email and clicks on the email link to confirm the address and is taken to the website. 
They can log in with the provided credentials and manage their content with all the wonderful features of Orchard Core CMS. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.